Welcome to your Barbados Today Evening News Update for Tuesday, September 22nd. The Barbados government says it will strongly advocate for the University of the West Indies Gable campus to be renamed after the late Prime Minister, Professor Owen Seymour Arthur. Prime Minister Mia Motley made the disclosure this morning during the second sitting of the second session of the House of Assembly as she led off tributes in Parliament to the island's longest serving Prime Minister, who passed away on July 27th at the age of 70. I have approached the Vice Chancellor of the University of the West Indies to indicate that if the Barbados government could have one wish and one wish alone, it would be to rename the Cave Hill campus after Owen Seymour Arthur. He represents the fine Barbadian that that campus was developed to be able to produce. And as Prime Minister, for a longer period than any other Prime Minister since independence, it was his to engage with that university. I know because for seven years of those 14 years, I was his Minister of Education. And I know the depth of his commitment. I know the extent to which he wanted the rest of his days to be associated with the institution that helped shape him and mold him as a young Barbadian man and that helped shape the national consciousness that gave him the courage to be the man that he was and to be the leader that he was. However, the Prime Minister, in expressing condolences to Professor Arthur's family, especially his widow and two daughters who were present in Parliament today, made it clear that the renaming was not a decision that could be made by the government of Barbados. It is a decision of the University of the West Indies and we will live with whatever decision they make, but we will strongly advocate for the Cave Hill campus to be named the Owen Arthur campus at Cave Hill. University of the West Indies because we believe that that simple act will inspire another young boy whether in Rose Hill or a young girl in Bush Hall or a young boy in Hinesbury Road to believe that they can be the best that they can be in this country to use his words that they can go for the best because Barbados must not settle for the bronze. Barbados must not settle for the silver. Barbados must go for the gold. The Caribbean Examinations Council has been applauded for taking a modified approach to this year's Cape and CSEC exams in the face of the challenges posed by the COVID-19 pandemic. The accolade came from Minister of Education, Technological and Vocational Training, Santia Bradshaw, during this morning's official release of the July-August 2020 examination results. Bradshaw said while the pandemic brought its challenges, CXC pushed ahead with CSEC and CAPE to ensure that no child was left behind and to preserve the integrity of the exams. In the modified approach which was adopted by CXC, an unprecedented step was taken to revise the examination strategy with a view to ensuring that candidates would be awarded valid grades through the assessment of critical competencies while minimizing the potential disruption of the education system. Throughout our discussions, it was clear that the sole intent of CXC was to maintain and preserve the integrity of the examinations. For those of you witnessing this event, you may not have been aware of the adjustments made by CXC this year, but I wish to share that candidates were primarily assessed on their performance in the multiple choice paper, paper one, which was used as a common paper for all candidates and the school-based assessment or SBAs or the alternative to the SBA for private candidates. In other words, with the exception of modern languages, human and social biology, and visual arts at the CSEC level, candidates did not have to write the traditional paper two this year. 
Minister Bradshaw added that despite the negatives, there were some positives due to the onset of the virus, chief among them the transition of the region's education systems. CXC has shown us what is possible when as a region we work together. This year, due to the challenges associated with the administration of examinations, the later than usual release of the 2020 results, and the need to accommodate many students who are eagerly awaiting their results for matriculation into tertiary institutions, both regionally and internationally. CXC has moved away from its established practice of releasing results to the ministries of education in the region prior to the release of to the candidates. Again, a positive as a result of COVID. Today, CXC will be releasing the official results for the CSEC and CAPE examinations to the ministries of education and candidates simultaneously. This change will give the candidates the opportunity to access their results in a timely manner and engage the institutions of their choice immediately to complete their matriculation. Barbados and three other Caribbean countries have commenced the operation of a CARICOM travel bubble as part of the efforts to curb the spread of COVID-19. Barbados's ambassador to CARICOM, David Commission, made the announcement today, saying that Bridgetown, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Dominica and Antigua and Barbuda, put the arrangements in place in keeping with a decision made at a special emergency meeting of CARICOM leaders earlier this month. The defining feature of a COVID-19 travel bubble is that persons entitled to participate in the travel bubble are not required to take COVID-19 tests nor to undergo a period of quarantine in order to travel to countries that are within the bubble. Our CARICOM heads of government took a major step towards resuscitating our travel and tourism sectors with their agreement to institute a travel bubble among CARICOM member states and associate member states, states which meet the agreed criteria. The heads took the decision at a special emergency session on Friday 11 September um, a session at which they acknowledged that the past six months have been a very challenging period globally and regionally as countries have struggled to cope with the effects of the no, um, novel coronavirus. The ambassador said in agreeing to establish the bubble, the heads were guided by a comprehensive report from the Caribbean Public Health Agency. Only those countries with no cases or those in the low risk category would be allowed to participate in the bubble. Heads of government agreed that travelers from countries within the bubble would be allowed entry without being subjected to PCR testing prior to arrival and would also not have to undergo quarantine restrictions. Travelers may, however, have to be subjected to screening on arrival. Such travelers should, however, have been resident in a bubble country or should not have traveled to a country outside of the bubble at least 14 days prior to the date of travel. It is agreed that initially, Antigua and Barbuda, Barbados, Dominica, Grenada, Montserrat, St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Lucia, and St. Vincent and the Grenadines will be in the bubble as these countries presently meet the criteria of being low risk. There's regional and international news after this short break.
To news from our regional neighbors now, don't expect Kamala Pasad Bisesa to step down as leader of Trinidad and Tobago's main opposition, United National Congress, following the party's defeat in the August 10 general elections. Speaking during a virtual report to party supporters last night, Pasad Bisesa hit back at critics, saying that she will not be forced out. I see some people have been crying, they're like little... Gosh, what's the word, boy? A little ants or flies or something like that. You know, people, that's their democratic right. The party will hold its internal elections when they are due. I will put my hat in the ring and I challenge you, manos y manos, woman to woman, come forward and put your name next to mine. I understand they're looking for somebody who wants to challenge me because none of them want to put their name next to mine. So do not worry. That is the democracy too, is it not? That is democracy. Some people didn't get a seat, whether it was Senate seat or sit in the house and they vex. They want to mash up the whole, mash up the whole castle, mash up everything, but they will not succeed. And they know they will not succeed. So you know what happens? They're not calling for an internal election. No. You know what they're calling for? You know what they're calling for? If you really truly wanted to have a play and a part in a democracy, in a democratic party, you will call for the election. No, they want me to resign. I am not resigning. I will call and the party will call its election when it's due. And again I say, come forward, we'll take you on. I'll take on all comers. I am not afraid of any of you. I've been here longer than you and I'm far brighter than you could ever, ever hope to be. And finally, to developments on the international scene, the United States today surpassed a grim milestone, recording 200,000 COVID-19 deaths. It comes amid an increase in cases in a number of states. Reuters TV has the details of the development in this report. Thousands of American flags were planted at the foot of the Washington Monument to mark the latest grim milestone in the U.S., 200,000 dead from the coronavirus. It's a figure once regarded as the maximum number of lives likely to be lost in the U.S. to the virus, but on Tuesday, that number came and went, with no end in sight. And these flags are indicative not only of the lives lost, but of the families left behind and suffering. Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi spoke Tuesday of the high toll the virus had wrought, with a warning for the president. But this was preventable. Not all of it, but much of it. And what could be lost in the future is preventable, too, if we embrace science. Science instead of politics. The disease, which first appeared in Wuhan, China in December, has since spread around the globe, infecting more than 30 million. The death toll in the United States, more than any other country, alone accounts for a fifth of global deaths. And eight months after the first U.S. case, the country is still recording roughly 40,000 daily cases and losing about 800 lives each day to the virus, according to a Reuters tally. COVID-19 has completely upended every facet of American life. It's changed the way people work, study, gather, shop, and celebrate. U.S. President Donald Trump has faced fierce criticism over his response to the virus. Critics say his repeated downplaying of the threat and severity of COVID-19, refusal to consistently wear a mask, and reluctance to take stronger measures allowed the virus to flourish in the United States. That's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbidistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.